Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 178. Problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that the hourly wages, hourly wages of 10 full time employees and 8 part-time employees, part-time employees amount to 222. They further go on to tell us that if four full-time employees receive $15 more for an hour's worth of their labor, then do five part-time employees. In that case, what are their hourly wages? If four full-time employees receive $15 more for one hour's worth of their labor, then do five part-time employees, then what are their wages? Let's get going, shall we? The very first thing we, we need to do, as always, in any algebra word problem, is to define our variable. Define our variable, variables clearly. So let's define our variables. We have full-time people and we have part-time people. We're going to use letter F to represent our full-time full employees, employees, hourly wage. Hourly wage. And similarly, we're going to use letter P to represent a part-time employees hourly wage. Now that we have defined our variable we can we can make our equations. The very first thing we are told that very first thing we are told is that 10 full-time employees. So if F represents the hourly wage of one full-time person times 10 will represent the hourly wage of 10 full-time workers and eight part-time workers. We know P represents the hourly wage of one part-time workers if we were to multiply it by 8, that would represent the hourly wage, the amount that we have to pay for one hour's worth of labor of eight part-time employees. And these two, the hourly wage of 10 full-time employees and part-time employees equals to 222. So that was quite simple, very straightforward. Let's move on. We need a second equation. We need, we need two independent equations for us to be able to solve for the two unknowns, the F and the P. Second equation is going to come from the second sentence. If four, four full-time employees receive $15 more for one hour's worth of their labor, then do five part-time employees. So four full-time employees, four full-time employees, four times F. That's how much money that they receive for hours worth of their wage. And five part-time employees will receive this much money, five times P dollars for the hourly worth of their wages. Is that correct? Is this equation valid? What does this equation say? What this equation says is that the amount that is paid for one hour's worth of wages to four, four full-time employees is the same as the amount that is paid to for one hour's worth of labor of five part-time employees. Is that what the problem says? It, that's not what the problem says. It says the four full-time employees receive $15 more for one hour's worth of labor. These four people receive $15 more. The amount that the four full-time employees receive for one hour's worth of their labor is actually more than the amount that five part-time employees receive for one hour's, one hour's worth of their labor. How much more is it? It's $15 more. So we have two choices. In order, if you want to put equal sign here, since this amount is $15 less than this amount, we have two choices. Either we can add 15 to this amount, and now this is valid, or we can take the amount that is given to four full-time employees and take away 15 from it, and since we take away 15 from it, the amount that this amount that represents the same amount that five part-time employees receive. Either way is fine. I'm going to stick with the original way because we have enough more room here. There we go. I'm going to, we're going to pick up speed now. As you can see, we have different coefficients here. Here f is 10, the coefficient of f is 10, here it is 4. We have different coefficient here, it's 8, and here is 5. It will be difficult to add and subtract uh, the two equations here. We need to make the coefficient of one of these variables the same. We can do it either way, we can try to make the coefficient of p the same by multiplying this equation, left hand equation by 5, 5 times 8 is 40, and multiply this equation by 8, and 8 fives are 40 again, we can make the coefficient of p the same, or we can make the coefficient of f the same. Let's see which one we want to do here. Let's multiply this equation by, this is, this is 4, this is 10, one we multiply, make it 40. Multiply this, this, or even 20, let's multiply 20, 20 is the least common multiplier. So multiply this equation by 2, multiply this equation by 2, and 
and multiply this equation by 5. Multiply this by 5. Well, 4 times 5 is 20, so we get 20f equals to 5 times 5 would be 25p, and 5, 5, 5 15s is 75. And here we will get 2 times 10 is 20f plus 2 times 8 is 16p equals 444. Bring the 16 to that side and we find that 20f equals 444 minus 16p. Now we notice here that we have 20p's here, we have 20, or rather 20f's here, 20f's here. If 20f equals this amount and 20f equals that amount, which means these two quantities must be equal. These two quantities must be equal. That's, what, that's exactly what we're going to do here. So this quantity here must equal that quantity, 25p plus 75. And now we can work to work with this thing. Let's see what we can do here. Bring the 16p to that side and bring 75 here. So 4, 444 minus 75 would have to equal 25p plus 16p. 25p plus 16p is 441. And let's see what this gives us. 441. And let's see what this gives us. 444. 444 minus 75 would be 9, this will become 3, 13 minus 7 is 6, we get 369, 369 equals 41, this should say, not 441, 41p, 25 plus 16 is 41p, which means p is equal to 369 over 41 question is, how many 41's are there in 369? How many 41's are there? 365, let's, let's do it on the top here. 369, how many 41's do you suppose in 369 going to be? It shouldn't take that long, it's a matter of second just by observing it. Just by looking at it, we should be able to tell how many 41's are there in 369. How? Well, actually, that's not, what I'm about to say is not necessarily true. I take it all back. I take it all back. Okay, listen. But, but, I'm going to still continue my, with my logic even though technically speaking it's not correct. I'm going to assume for the time being, I'm going to assume for the time being that the amount of money that these people are getting paid for an hourly wage is actually a whole dollar. It doesn't involve any cents. There are no decimals. If you were to work with that assumption, which is not necessarily true, there is no reason why we have to assume that these are unteachers. But just for, this, just for the sake of simplicity, simplicity, if I were to assume that, just to see where we are, you can see it's 41. 41, 41, or actually I'm making too much fuss about it, 41 times 10 is 410, this is 370, so about 40 less, as you can see clearly, so 370 and 40, it's exactly 9, it's exactly 9, how else do we know it's 9, because the unit digit is 9, 41, 41 times, it, it could not possibly have been 41 times 3, because 41 times 3 will end in a 3, 41 times 7 will end in a 7, 41 times 9 is the only possibility, it's not the only possibility, but it's very likely because, because it works out. Also, as I said, 41 times 10 is 4, 4, 410. This is 370. It's exactly 41 less. It's 9. 9 and 9 for the 36. So the, so the answer is P equals 9. A part-time worker receives $9 an hour. A part-time worker receives $9. If part-time worker receives $9, what does the full-time person get? part-time person gets... nine dollars per hour question is what does the full-time person get and what can we use an equation for a full-time person we can use this equation if you like let's, let's use this equation you can use either of these equations here here or that one i'm going to use this one because it's 20 it'll be easier to divide by 20 whatever we get here to so 20 times f equals 25 times p which is 25 times p which is which we sound is 9 plus 75. Well, that makes it very easy. We have 925. Listen, we have 925 and we have 325. 75 is a 325. 325 plus 925 is 1225. 1225 and this is 20. Divide both sides by 5. 
20 will become 4 and 25 will become 5. Divide both sides by 4. 12 will become 3 and the 4 will go away. There you go. A full-time person receives $15. The salary of full-time person is $15 per hour. And the part-time person gives $9 per hour. You want to get one more? You want to do one more? Let's do one more. We need the room to write the problem. Just give me one second here. Let's do one more. We are told that a merchant wishes to make this is 179. A merchant wishes to make 45 pound mixture of two types of coffee beans. So he's, he's going to combine, he's going to mix two different coffee beans and he wants to make 45 pounds. We are told that one costs eight dollars per pound and the other five dollars per pound. He intends to sell the blend for six dollars per pound. So he's going to mix them up. He's going to mix up these two coffee beans. One of them, if he sells it separately, he sells it for eight dollars per pound, the other one he sells it for five dollars per pound, the blend that he's about to make he wants to sell it for six dollars per pound. The question is how should he mix them? How much how should he mix? How much of each should he use? Given the fact given the fact that he is going to want to make 45 pounds. So where do we start from? You want to give it? You want, you want to give it a shot? You want to try it yourself? Go ahead. If you want to try it yourself, pause the video, do the problem yourself, and once you have done so, resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds' time. I'll give you five seconds. I'll get out of your way. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay, give it a shot. Okay, here we go. It's very straightforward, very simple. Again, as always, first thing we need to do is define our variables. So we have two types of coffee beans. Two types of coffee beans. Let's call one of them A. A will represent the price. A will represent, not the price rather, price which we know, we, we know the prices. A will represent the amount of type, amount of first type, first kind and B will represent the amount of second type in pound. Look, let's begin. Since one pound of A costs eight dollars, we're going to use A for the amount and the name. We're going to use the A for the name of the coffee bean and the amount. Here it's a numerical value and it's also we're going to use it for name. Since one pound costs eight dollars, if you were to use a, if you want to use a pounds of first type, it will be eight times a. That's the amount. That's the price of type a coffee beans. Eight times a. Similarly, if you were to use b pound of the second type, the second type costs five dollars. If one pound costs five dollars, and if you were to use b pounds, this is how much it will cost. And we know that he, once he, once he, we know that once he finishes mixing the two types A and B, he wants to sell it for six dollars per pound. Six dollars per pound, he will have A pounds of type first type, and he will have B pound of second type. 
It's very important that you understand where this is coming from. Again, one more time, these, these A and B are quantities represented in pounds. A pounds, B pounds. A represents the A pounds of first type of coffee bean. B represents the B pounds of the B represents the amount, the pound of second type of coffee bean, B pounds. So he's going to sell the blend, whatever the blend happens to be, for six dollars per pound. So A plus B represents the total pounds, and each pound we, uh, is, he's going to sell it for six dollars. So this is what he gets, and of course this has to be equal. That's all he says here. We we we're not trying to. He just wants to mix them together and sell it for six dollars. That's all. Let's see. We're done. Open the parentheses. We get six times A. 6 times B, 8 times A, 5 times B, bring the B's to the side, A's to the side, 6A, when you bring it to A this side, we'll end up with 2A, when you bring the 5B to that side, we end up with a 6B minus 5B is B, which means, which means A over B, A over B, this is 1, so if you bring the B down and 2 down there, A over B equals 1 half. A over B equals 1 half. What does it tell you? It tells us that we need to mix this, this, this blend in a ratio of 1 to 2. 1 to 2. We have a total of 45 pounds. Since we want to make a total of 45 pounds and they have to be mixed in the ratio of 1 to 2, it makes it quite easy. It makes it quite easy. So this implies, this implies that we need to have we need to have 15 pound of A, 15 pound of A, and 30 pound of B. They have to be mixed in a ratio of 1 to 2. They have to be mixed in a ratio of 1 to 2. Would you like to do one more, a very similar one, a very similar question to this one? Just do one more, very similar to it, okay? Again, the same situation. We have a merchant who wishes to make who wishes to make a blend, a blend of two types of coffee bean. One we are called, he, wants, he wishes to make a blend of two types of coffee bean. One we are told costs seven dollars. The other one we are told costs twelve dollars. Costs twelve dollars or pound. And the blend that he's going to make, he intends to sell the blend for ten dollars per pound. Ten dollars per pound. How much should, how much should, what should be the ratio? See here we cannot say how much, we cannot say how much because we're not told how much he's going to make. Here it says what should be the ratio. What should be the ratio that he used to make. Same exact situation, same exact, like, same exact variable. A will represent the amount of first type of coffee bean that we will use in pounds. B will represent the amount of uh, second type of coffee bean will represent. And the equation that we we'll get is the price of the first type of coffee bean. The, uh, the price is going to be seven dollars per pound, so it's seven times A. The other one is twelve dollars per pound, so it's twelve times B. And when he mixes them together, he wants to sell it for ten dollars. So it's ten times a plus b. Then same as before, as you can see. Open the parentheses, we get ten a plus ten b. Now we're going to bring all the a's to one side and b's to the other side. Same as before. And we're just simply looking for the ratio. So bring the seven a to that side. We end up with three a's. And here we have twelve b. Bring the ten b. So here we end up with two b's. 12b minus 10b is 2b. That's it, we're done. Which means that a over b, a over b is going to be 2, this 2 right here, over 3. That's it. Question was, what should be the ratios of uh, uh, that he should mix? He should blend the two beans in the ratio of 2 to 3. For every 2 pounds, for every 2 pounds of the first type of coffee bean that he uses, he must mix it with 3 pounds of the second type. And if he does that, then he can afford to sell the blend at ten dollars per pound because that's exactly what he was getting when he, when he was separate, selling them separately. It boils down to the same price that he was getting when, when he was selling them separately. Perhaps putting them together, he will sell some of this also in addition to what he was selling them separately. That will increase the sales. You understand? 
Thank you. Bye now.